Flood damaged communities are now facing shortages of critical supplies such as food and water. Rhiannon Elston is live for us in Mossman. Rhiannon, I understand you've been in the Daintree this morning. How are things looking there? Yeah, this morning we took a drive up to the Daintree. The road to get there is still extremely damaged. It has been washed away in a number of areas. It is open, but to limited capacity. Now, in the Daintree village itself, extensive damage there. We know up to two metres of rainfall tipped over that community in a matter of hours. People had to be rescued off their rooftops, and we saw entire roads that have been ripped to pieces. Now, the Daintree Ferry is a vital service that connects communities further north to areas down here north of Port Douglas. And that service is not operating at the moment, although there are furious activities down there. There are a lot of machines trying to get that service restored. But we know those communities in the north are really suffering. They're now running low on basic supplies, things like food, water, medicines and fuel for generators. This has been communities that were cut off without fuel and food and water and medical supplies. That's the first priority. We've had people evacuated out of places like Woodjul Woodjul. Uh, we, we now turn to that recovery phase and when you see the devastation of some of the roads, um, I, I'm, the Captain Cook Highway has been absolutely decimated. Now, that's the lifeblood for the Douglas Shire. Now, locals in Daintree tell us they usually shop for supplies for weeks in advance. So at the moment, they still have access to some of those food, water, basic supplies. But they are concerned about what's coming next. Each day we'd um, gather around here and think that was the end of it. But then you'd wake up the next morning and the river, as you've seen, just got higher and higher and higher. Um, and Sunday night was just something that... I've never experienced before. I disappeared when I, when I heard it was coming. I went into Port Douglas and uh, uh, I just came back as soon as uh, the road was open. The only way we can get into our property uh, is via boat because the bridges and bypasses have all been um, washed away. Um, and most people have been checking on other farms up through the time um, by just, yeah, boating in and out of properties. Now, the reason they're concerned is due to the state of the roads. The local mayor here in Port Douglas, Michael Kerr, says it will take weeks for those repairs to be made. Because they are so isolated, I think there could be some time. Um, we're lucky enough that here we've got two access routes into Port Douglas, the one that goes via Mariba, and that, has going to, that is now open for trucks to be bringing supplies into Douglas at least, so therefore we can get them up there as quickly as possible. Now, the mayor also told me he's keen for tourists to return here. So many businesses right across this region depend on the tourists that love to flock here to far northern Queensland. Now, the major towns are starting to get their essentials back online, things like electricity, phone reception and water. So they're more prepared for tourists. But for those smaller centres and more remote communities, it's going to take more time. They're focused on survival. And appreciate the update on the ground there in far north Queensland as the area continues the clean up.